So now it's time to start making drawing files for the base subassembly, and it may have been a while since the last time you had to do drawings, so we're going to go through this mostly step by step, but there's going to be times where it's repetitive, so I'm just going to pause the video and then show you what the finished product should look like. So let's get started. We go to our new drawing file, and I need to change my sheet size to A, so it's 8.5 by 11 inches. And now this is too big, so I need to delete out my ANSI large title block and put in just a normal size ANSI A title block. Go back to your base. We're going to search for things that we would find on the base subassembly. So that should include the base plate. Alright, that's a pretty big one, so we'll start off with that. It says this is my front view, and I'll agree with that. That looks like a good front view. Uh, it's different on the top and the bottom, so instead of showing the side view right away, I'm going to click in the middle. I'll show the top view and an isometric view. I'll drag this both down a little bit. I'll go back up to projected. I'll project that image up again and you can kinda see the difference between the two and just to make it even more significant I'm gonna take off the hidden lines so now you can see there's four little screw holes on the bottom of this and none on the top of this which means I probably have my views mixed up here I'm gonna swap these around alright so now it's a little more clear that this is the top and this is the bottom. And let's make this piece shaded and start in with dimensioning. Okay, anytime that you have holes, you want to use under annotate the hole and thread annotation style. We only have two holes to worry about on the top of this. Uh, they do have different, they, they occur more than once, so I'm going to put an X2 next to each of them. I do that just by double clicking on it and then telling it what I want. And for hole and thread down here, do the same kind of thing. And if you reference between the top and the bottom, these four holes I already annotated up here so this is the only one I need to annotate on the bottom and there's more than two I could say times four but I'm just gonna put a TYP which stands for typical and now I just need my locations for all of the other things so I'm gonna be very careful on this that when I go to select the length that I'm clicking on the outside edges. This is chamfered, so if you click on the inside edge, it'll bring up a number that doesn't look quite right. want to avoid doing that. And uh, let's reference our paper one more time. Let's see here. If we're looking at this drawing, it's giving me this is a datum. This is the common edge that all the dimensions are coming from. I'm going to keep that the same on these drawings as well. And that way it's easier for me to check your work and it gives you a reference as what is right. I'm going to uncheck this edit dimensions when created for now. And when you're doing datum dimensioning, it's important that you click on your reference edge first and then the center of the hole you're trying to dimension to. We're going to run out of space just a little bit, I'm trying to get this last one. So let's put it down where it should go, hit escape a couple of times, and I can click and drag this down. Okay. Something else to note is that this 0.44 and the 0.56, if I look on here, it's 0.4375, and it's supposed to be, hmm, well they don't show a 10.56, do they? And that's because they're showing from this edge instead is 0.4375. I like just using the one reference edge. I don't know why they went with two different ones here. 
we'll do our own thing. But one thing I did want to point out is that this should go out to three decimal places. And by three I meant four. So 0.4375. And I'm guessing this will need four as well. Okay, we need to get the overall thickness in here. And there's also this little chamfer, and you have a chamfer note. Click on the angled edge first, and then a side view. Drop it in place. And now's a good time to remind you that anytime you have something that looks like a circle, you should be using a center mark to locate where the center of that circle is, which is going to make these much easier to dimension. As they are also the center of these. And I am just going to show one of them that it's 0.5 over from each edge. Oop. And you may get an angle by accident. That's OK. Just look at your symbol. It should tell you what kind of measurement it's going to be giving you. Let's try that one more time. not want to cooperate. There we go. And I'm just going to add some extra text that this is typical on both of these. And the other thing to note is that with all of these drawings we started to talk about tolerances and that every dimension needs to have a tolerance well, all the way up at the beginning of this whole packet there was a note here it says all parts have the following tolerances highlight that copy and just as a text note over here we can paste that in I'm going to delete out the plus or minus they have and put in the symbol for it instead. Recopy it so it's good to put on to the next one. And then we still have text selected, so I can put in my name. This is the base plate. And if you forget, it's here under component. For some reason the computer is slowing down. So I'm just going to pause this for now.